three there it is hello ladies and gentlemen welcome back to exotic astrology we are with michael here and we are going to discuss on the current transits of jupiter and saturn which is happening in their respective nakshatras about which he will enlighten us and then we will also see about rahu hopefully if time permits <laughs> <laughs> in punar vasu and pushya so the stage is rahu and i was going to say and if rahu will let us <laughs> <laughs> okay so one thing i want to go into you know because when we talk about nakshatras people will quite often say well anuradha is ruled by saturn and like purvashada is ruled by venus but really nakshatras are not ruled by planets that's the whole thing they're not ruled by planets and it's not really a, i think a fair word to use nakshatras are they're connected with deities it's deities that rule the nakshatras but most of us work with vimshottri dasha and the planetary associations that we have for the most part with the nakshatras are taken for the purpose of interpreting vimshottri dasha which is a very important dasha but if you work with other dasha systems sometimes different planets will be connected to the nakshatras so i've started using the word emissary so an emissary is a messenger right so if we understand like in ancient times like you know kings would have messengers right and the messenger's job was to like you know take a message from the king to another kingdom so if that messenger was a complete idiot and a bumbling fool then by the time he got to the other end and he was there to kind of transmit a message to the other kingdom he was going to get it all incorrect and when he got it all incorrect you know basically it you know would create problems for the king right so we can kind of understand planets and their connection to quote unquote ruling nakshatras in a similar way so if a planet is somewhat compromised or afflicted or weak in some way it's going to affect the quality of the message of that nakshatra and determine whether it's more of a negative polarity or a positive polarity there are a few different ways i determine this one is connected to the avastas and others connected to shambhala but we're not going to go deeply into that but i just want people to have that understanding really with with the planetary rulers of the nakshatras you can understand them better as messengers you can still use the word rulers but just understand that really on a certain level they're not really ruling the nakshatra that's why if you kind of go into all these things of going wow these two planets are in each other's nakshatras that might be really powerful well sometimes it is and sometimes it's not you know it 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 depends on the strength weaknesses of those things etc it presently we've got jupiter in anuradha nakshatra and we've got saturn in purva ashada nakshatra so let's talk about that a little bit okay so i like using the text from taittiriya brahmana to really explain these things and you'll hear different interpretations of this dependent upon whose translation that you're reading i think that they both have like you know really wonderful merits and there are two main like interpretations of these sutras that are out there now um the one that i'm using is the one that was translated by ernst wilhelm um so the well-being along with the gifts of aditya mitra are ascending towards from above and the ascended to from below so we understand anuradha nakshatra to be a very devoted nakshatra so we receive gifts from the heavens by you know trying to when we try to ascend towards god or when we try to ascend towards our own divine potential then you know god ascends to us doesn't descend to us he ascends to us because we're recognizing our connection with god on a certain level so anuradha nakshatra is quite often understood as being a nakshatra that's connected to devotion and we understand the story of radha quite often when we're understanding anuradha nakshatra and radha was the perfect devotee of of krishna but how can you be devoted to something if you're one and the same with it right so the whole quality of devotion in itself requires the uh component of separation 
mixed into the equation. So Anuradha Nakshatra is also about boundaries, having enough separation from something in order to see it clearly, right? So as Jupiter transits through Anuradha Nakshatra, before we expand or move forward in our life in relation to those areas of our chart that Jupiter rules, it's taking us through a process of making us take a look at those things that we're devoted to uh, and causing us to take a deep look at those things. In, in some instances, perhaps question our devotion to those things. That would be dependent upon the strength of Saturn in your own individual chart in contrast to you know, Saturn's strength and transit right now. So it'll make you question those things that you're devoted to. Do they really serve you moving forward? Uh, right now, so kind of adding, because we were going to mention Rahu, um, dependent upon which system you're using, uh, Rahu is in Pusha Nakshatra or Punarvasu Nakshatra. So we're, we're going to touch on both of those aspects. So with Rahu in Pusha Nakshatra, what are you sacrificing for? And are those things that you're sacrificing for really worthy of the sacrifice that you're putting towards those things? They may be. They may not be, but it's a process that you're going through and you're needing to work your way through before progressing uh, with wherever Jupiter rules in your chart. So as Jupiter is presently transiting Anuradha Nakshatra, we can also take a look at Saturn and how Saturn is transiting Purva Ashada Nakshatra. So we're going to read the uh, text from Taitariya Brahmana that's connected to uh, Purva Ashada Nakshatra. I can stop clicking so many buttons on my end. <laughs> there we go. So the earlier victories of Appa, the waters, are vigor from above and a battle from below. So if we think about the experiences that we go through daily in life, life seems like it's such a struggle, right? You know, we have to go to work. And we have to do all these things to pay the bills. And sometimes we show up at a job and we're doing work and we have to pretend and put up a facade that we're actually um, enjoying ourselves or that we get along okay. And, most, and we all have to do that on a certain level. We, we confront things in our day-to-day -day experiences where we, um, we, we say we behave tactfully right? When in reality, we might want to say something completely different in those circumstances, right? And if you have a Scorpio ascendant, maybe you would. <laughs> okay. no, no offense meant to Scorpio ascendants, okay? So again, I'll duck before all this stuff comes flying at me. Um, so Purva Ashada Nakshatra kind of confronts you with the concept of, do you want to be engaged in that battle every day? Or do you want to go to a higher place within yourself where you're cleansed, right? Equally, the reason that you see the world as a struggle is because your perception isn't clean. So if you saw the true nature of reality, the true nature of what's causing your existence, uh, which is God, God, himself, herself, itself, whatever it is you want to call it, then you would no longer, you'd have a different relationship to that battle, right? So if you understand the true nature of your existence, any challenge that you go through is going to invigorate you rather than make you feel like you're dealing with the struggle. So when you're dealing with the struggle, you got to look at the truth of a situation. So taking that and adding that back to Jupiter and Anuradha Nakshatra, as you're sorting through understanding your devotions and understanding um, whether certain things are worthy of your sacrifice or not, you're having to look at the truth of a situation and you're having to take a look at those truths in a very humble way, right? You may have to look at certain aspects of yourself that you don't want to look at. Saturn's gaze, so all the planets have a gaze, right? Jupiter looks up, Saturn looks down, and Saturn's when it's looking down, its gaze is very narrow. It's going, I'm just looking at these things, I'm focusing on these things. And that's why Saturn creates so many problems in our chart, because things that he's touching on, he's going to separate us from those things, because Saturn has so many enemies that in order to keep the areas of the chart that he rules moving forward, he has to focus just on that. 
So as Saturn gets kind of caught up in those day-to-day -day things, he's not going to always see the clearer picture. And so we go through these humbling experiences or face these challenges, which is more the positive side of, a sad, of Saturn, wanting to reveal to us what we need to take a good, humble look at, what we perhaps need to move out of our lives in order to clear the way for things moving forward. And, you know, we also have in, in the coming years, we have a Jupiter-Saturn connection to, <laughs> to look forward to, right? That's going to be Jupiter-Saturn connections are really intense, you know, because you've got this expansion and this contraction, right? That's why, um, that's why understanding, uh, like, um, that's why Brahaspati is connected with Pusha. And Pusha Nakshatra on many levels is about those limitations, those sacrifices that we have to make in order to nourish our lives moving forward. It's a Pusha nakshatra is a very nourishing nakshatra. It's a very sacred nakshatra. It's also uh, understood as one of the most positive nakshatras. But the reason it's so positive on that level is it helps us to understand what we need to make sacrifices for, the limitations that we need to face. So then as Rahu begins to move back into Punarvasu nakshatra, then it's reassessment time. It's reassessment time. And it's time to, you know, as Rahu moves back into Punarvasu Nakshatra, it will also encompass a period of time where I believe, unless I'm mistaken, that Jupiter will also be in Jaishta Nakshatra. And so there's a resurrection. So there's a uh, period of time that you're returning to that you once were connected to. It's an understanding of, I, I've accepted the limitations that I'm facing. And since I've understood those limitations that I'm facing, now I understand those things that I really need to nourish in my life and that I really need to support in order to move forward. And I can let those things gather in strength. Here's an interesting thing. I want to I want to read about Punarvasu Nakshatra for you, since I've been reading these uh, Nakshatra Sutras in association with what we're talking about today. So all the Nakshatra Sutras, with the exception of two, say of the deity. So, for instance, when we were reading about Saturn, it said of Appa. When we were reading about Jupiter, it said, of Aditya um, Mitra. Well, when we read for Punarvasu, it says, for. And when you read for Mula Nakshatra, it says, for. Right? So for Punarvasu Nakshatra, it's the restoration of good for Aditi. So Aditi is the mother of the Adityas, the mother of the uh, 12 parts of the sun, uh, personified or deified, which equally relates to the soul. So Aditi is the mother of the soul, the mother of our soul. So the restoration of good for Aditi is the wind, vata, from above, and moisture from below. So when we face those challenges, that's, that's fertile ground for our growth. But we can only see that when we approach it in an undivided state. So Punarvasu Nakshatra can take those challenges that you've been through and help you to make good of them. Whereas, you know, we're not talking about Mula, but just touching on Mula for a second, Mula is for Nariti. So Nariti breaks things apart. It destroys those things, but it equally, it destroys those things so that we can digest them properly. So for Aditi, that's, that's nourishing those things that you're wanting to grow. For Nariti, which is connected with Mula, that's for destroying those things that no longer serve you. So it's important to understand, as we're looking at Saturn in Purva Ashada Nakshatra, that that's after Saturn's transit in Mula Nakshatra. What, what are those things that have fallen apart, that are breaking apart in your life? Why are they breaking apart? Right? Taking a look at that, taking an honest assessment of that, and really understanding what you're needing to devote your time, energy, and attention to moving forward, and how to nourish those things, right? Equally understanding Punarvasu Nakshatra, it's a chara and a chala Nakshatra, which means it's moving and it's unsteady. I think we can uh, do this in the yeah. last part, I guess. Yeah.
Yeah. yeah, let's touch on it briefly because we're we're almost done anyway. I was going to touch on it for maybe like another five minutes or so. Okay, all right. So we'll see each other again. Okay, stay tuned. Bye.